Hello, my name is Dahlia Yan. I am part of the January part-time cohort for software engineering. And in this video, I will be talking through how I went about coding my first project using Ruby. So I spent a good amount of time on my project searching for a link that would be easy to parse through. I found that many of the APIs online either required me to purchase it or it limited the amount of information I can scrape from it. Um, and I've really struggled with finding something that was original, that piqued my interest, that I wouldn't get tired of like re reading and rereading about. So I decided to scrape from a website that I'd found. Um, it took me quite a while to find this website. Once I found it, I realized that I liked the structure of the website. Um, it seemed to me to be a website that I'd be able to scrape from and not get completely lost. So I will show you um, how I kind of went about choosing this website specifically for their um, the way the page was set up. Let me try to find where it is. Here we go. So I have the do the class name list dash card. Um, and then in this, in the ID before it, or in the class row parent, right over here, I realized that the list of photographers I need to scrape from were organized, and, you know, one after the other, and they also had content that I'd be able to scrape from. So I decided to choose this website. Um, from choosing this website, I copied the link, I saved it in a whole bunch of places so could I, I could always access it. And then from there, I built my scraper file. So I made a class called Scraper. Um, I knew that because I was scraping from a website, I would require the gem Nokoguri, which would allow me to scrape from the website, as well as the gem Open URI, which would open up the link to the page URL. Um, so I required those in my gem file. And I also required the, um, those gems in my environment file. So I required Nokogiri, open URI, and I knew that I'd eventually want to use color in my project. So I required colorized gem. Um, so then I took my link and I brought it over to my scraper file. I I defined a class called Get Photographers, um, and I returned it to the Scraper class. I created a class variable that stored my Nokugiri HTML parsing uh, gem, and I required it to open the link to the website I was scraping from and my class variable uh, took in the CSS command and from there I returned it the div.listcard class that my photographers were listed under and I required that from that URL and from that class my, my code would scrape each individual photographer and then it would file it through um, the the variable or the object that I called card. Um, to make it easier for myself, I decided to create a new object called photo object, which would correspond with each of the 20 photographers I was scraping from. And I required it to be instantiated a new element called photographer.new, which took in my photographer class and required it created a new object for each photographer that had its own attributes. So I created the attribute full book title, which equaled um, the line that I was able to scrape from the website that would output the full book title. I scraped the image link that I wanted my users to have access to. I also scraped the individual book title, my author summary um, paragraph from the website, 
as well as the author's individual name. And I also scraped a link for the user to be able to buy the book from the website. Um, and I required the card object um, for each attribute to hold the parsed line. Um, and then beneath that, I called my photography object to hold the attributes name, image, title, summary, and author, which are also defined under my photographer class. Um, they were attributed to Cessard in my photographer class, and I set it equal to the names that I gave it in the section above. Just so I would be able to pinpoint specifically which line of parsing my name, image, title, and summary would be um, in a clean way. So once I was able to figure out how to parse my code, I had to ensure that my application was interactive and that the scraper, the CLI, and the photographer class were working with one another. So I went to my photographer class, I defined my attribute assessors, and I created a class variable called all. Under my initialize method, I stored all the values of my photographer class into this all class variable, so that way I would be able to access the, um, the different attribute assessors from this class outside of this specific class. Um, from there, I wanted my users to be able to output the list of photographers um, when they ran the terminal, so I defined my method list photographers to the list photographers on line 32 to the photographer class. Uh, and then I called the, the class variable, and then I, upon that I called the each method as well as the with index method. And I started at one because I wanted my users to output a list that started at one. If I didn't put that, it would start at zero. And from there, I gave it a value. I gave each object an index. And on line 33, I outputted my puts, and then I um, kind of indented it. And I gave each index, which would start at one, one um, dot, so the number, dot, and then the object, which I pass through here, and then it would be returned with the object name. On the scraper file, I, on my object name, I'd be returned with a list of the full book titles from this photographer class method, or class. I also wanted my users to be able to find each book title, so I created a find each book title self, so, which would be called on the photographer class, which inputted, or which would receive an input of the chosen title, which the user would choose. And I wanted my photographer class to go through all of the values that it had to find the specific object. So the object would take in the title that the, use, that the user chose, and that title would have to be equal to the title uh, object that the user was referring to. So I created these methods in my photographer class and I also created the self all because I wanted to return all the values, um, all the class values back to my photographer class. So then in my CLI file I created my class and I defined my method called begin back to my CLI class and in my begin file I called on my scraper dot get photographers class. This line, line four, only works because I made my photog my scraper method or my scraper class um, dot self so that it would be returned to the self class and I called it which allowed my CLI file to get the values that I was able to scrape off my website. From there, I defined my method on line nine called self hello, which I wanted to greet the users 
um, and output a list of photographers. So I called my photographer class dot list photographers, which would then print a list of 1 through 20 of the photographers I scraped from the website. In my CLI, I also um, created my make method, make selection method, uh, which I called to the CLI class. And there, the, the user would be able to choose which photographer from the list printed above that they wanted to learn more about. Um, I chose to use Sleep One because I wanted my users to be able to absorb the information I was outputting into the terminal and then from there make a selection. I also created my choose to equal the user input, which would be gets, and then I wanted the input that the user put in to chomp to an integer because I only wanted the user to be able to use uh, digits to make their selection. And I created a conditional statement with that choose a value. I only wanted the users to be able to input a value that was greater than zero or equal to or less than 20 because that was how long my list was. And then if the user did that and correctly did it, they would output the photographer class and the method find titles display object. So if they put the digit number one, they'd be receiving the, um, the value of the object title specific to that number that they're calling. Um, so once the user chose the value of the photographer they'd like to choose, if my photographer find titles display objects, choose which takes in the number value that the photographer is, would run. And in my photographer class, I define that method as um, it takes in the value of an integer, which is the number that corresponds with the photographer, and it starts the index, um, the value of integer minus one, and I create the object that takes in all of the, of the class variable of photographers, and it takes in that index uh, that I'm defining. And because they ran it in my CLI file, when they choose their photographer, they get a list that outputs the object, which is the specific photographer's author value, title summary, as well as it includes the link for them to purchase the book, as well as an image from into their web browser or from their terminal, they can copy and paste it and view that image. Once the users returned the information of the photographer they're choosing, the app will run the run again method. And in the run again method, I ask the user if they'd like to learn about a different photographer, and they have the option of either choosing yes or no. Um, and then the app would run the user input method. The user input takes in the user value and it chomps it down. Um, so I'm going to return back to my make selection method. If the user inputs a value, uh, so if they choose something that is incorrect, um, that does not allow this part of my code to run, they will be returned with the error method. At the bottom of my code, I've defined the error method telling the user that they input the value incorrectly. And if they do input the value incorrectly, they will be returned with make selection again. They will be told that they have to uh, uh, choose a, pub a publication that they'd like to learn more about. So that's how my make selection method works. Back to my run again method. So I, won I made a conditional um, that and took the user value. Um, so if the user chose to learn about a different photographer, type yes. I would call my yes method and ask if that includes the user input. So if the user wants to learn something again, they'd type in yes. So if their input included, or if my yes method included whatever the user inputted, then it would print the photographer class list uh, with the method list photographers again. Um, which would allow the user again to make a selection of which photographer they'd like to learn about.
in my yes method, I created below here, I inputted values that would positively work in the code if the user were to, you know, type something incorrectly or lack of lower, uppercase, lowercase, whatever it may be, it would allow the user to type their version of saying yes and allow the code to continue. So if the yes method includes uh, the value that the user does want to continue, they'd re be returned with a list of photographers and be asked to make another selection. If the user chooses not to learn about a different photographer, then it would call my no method and ask if my no method included the user input. So if the user were to type no or lowercase no in my no method, it has all the different values of no defined. Then it would call the exit mode method. My exit mode method right here thanks the user for um, you know running the code and being able to exit them out of the application. If the user does not type yes or no, then it would return my error method telling them that their input is incorrect, and then it would run the run again file, which would ask them if they'd like to learn about a different photographer or not. So that is how my CLI command line interface works in a terminal. It allows the user to be able to choose which photographer they'd like to learn about, um, allow them to output the values of the photographer that they'd like to know, as well as allowing the user to be able to select a different photographer from that list or return the user to exit the project and be returned back to their terminal. Um, so my scraper method holds all of the information that my photographer method needs to have. So my photographer class intakes all of the values that I was able to scrape from online. And then my CLI file, my CLI class, allows my user to take the information that was scraped and pass to the photographer class and output it giving the user different options into how they want to interact with my application. So um, some errors that I went through with my project was scraping. I really struggled with finding the correct attributes with every value that I wanted to get. Um, I relied on help from my peers or the internet to see how people were able to step out of the class and then step back into it to parse the information that they wanted to get. Um, in my photographer class, I didn't really struggle with setting attribute assessors. I knew what information I wanted to parse um, and I knew how I wanted my users to interact with my application, so that wasn't a struggle for me. My gem file, I knew what I needed uh, in order to have my code be functional and how to get the information I needed from the website I parsed from. My environment file, I didn't really do anything to change it. I just made sure that my require relative files knew that my photographer class or my photographer file required my CLI file and my CLI file required both files to be functional. Um, my CLI file, I struggled with getting the user input. Um, I had to create conditional statements and for my yes or no um, statement I confused the user input and the yes so I asked my code if the user input includes my yes method then uh, I got some direction that you know my yes method should be defined and it should see if my user input was one of the values provided. But other than that, I didn't really struggle with creating my methods. I knew how I wanted my app to work. I knew how I wanted my users to be able to interact with my code. Um, the only thing I would say is the parsing was difficult for me. Um, and then there were some little tweaks that I had with my conditional statements. And getting that to work correctly was something that I had to work on. It took some time for me. Um, but overall it was a good experience.